Helicopters are used all over the world for transporting passengers. But the most important use for them is rescuing people from areas that are difficult to get to by land. I'm here at Her Majesty's Coast Guard base in North Wales to meet an amazing rescue helicopter and her crew. The helicopter behind me is used to rescue people in need from the sea or from the mountains. If someone hurts themselves on top of a mountain, it's impossible to get an ambulance up there, so the Coast Guard's called. A rescue can come any time of day or the middle of the night, and it sounds as if the crew have a rescue call coming in now. They all spring to action at once. First, they look at a map of the area to check for any dangers and work out the best route. Just look at this amazing tractor pulling the helicopter out of the hangar. Now it's time for the crew to put their special safety gear on. Everything has a purpose. This life-saving jacket will inflate so that the crew member floats in water. And it even has its own air supply, just in case they find themselves underwater and need to breathe fresh air. Then, it's out to the helicopter to fly! On board are pilot Mike, Captain Kate, John the winch operator, and Tomo the winch man. It's Tomo's job to get lowered out of the helicopter to rescue someone on the ground. After a few safety checks, it's time for takeoff. This whole process, from call to flight, takes the crew under 15 minutes. Engine start! Look at how fast those rotors can turn. The rotors chop through the air and make everything around them very windy. Whoa! I can hardly stay on my feet! Red Mechanical! Let's use your super slow motion camera to see just how many times those rotors are turning. I love using Gecko Super Slow Mo, mainly because it just looks cool. But look, a helicopter's rotor blades can spin 10 times per second. Oh dear, are you okay, Red Mechanical? As the rotors spin faster, the helicopter lifts off the ground and flies into the air. Captain Kate controls the helicopter by pointing the rotor blades in the direction she wants the helicopter to fly. Today the crew are practicing their winching skills using a dummy instead of a real person. The pilot skillfully hover over the area just above where the dummy is. Tomo clips himself to the winch and John carefully lowers him down. Tomo would then check how poorly the person on the ground is before winching both of them back up to the helicopter safely. Nicely done team! Back at base the engineers are always on hand to make sure the helicopters are in the best working order and ready to fly. Safety is the most important thing and these engineers are the best in the business. It's a real team effort keeping these amazing helicopters flying and rescuing people in need. This is Tom and Kev. Tom's a pilot and Kev is a winch operator. They're going to give us a quick tour inside the helicopter. Welcome everyone to the S92 Search and Rescue Helicopter. First and foremost, very importantly, we've got two large winches here. And these winches have got two straps. And the idea of this is we can lower these down to people in the water or on a mountain and pick them up and take them to safety. So let's look inside now in the aircraft itself. 
And as you can see, as you come into this helicopter, it's a large space. Here we've got a camera which we use when we're searching for people. This can pick up people on the water, on the mountainside. So when we've picked up our patient, which we've taken off the hoist, we bring them into, into the aircraft itself and we can put them onto this, our stretcher. And they may well be in the stretcher, but this is a lovely area for us to work on them and make them feel comfortable in the aircraft and we can give them medical treatment if they require it. Once we get to the hospital, we need to get our patient out of the aircraft safely and the best way we can do that is we lead them and lift them off here down through the ramp itself off the aircraft into the hospital where they can be looked after. Okay this is the cockpit of the helicopter there are two pilots one sits here in this chair and the other one sits on the other side these are the controls to fly the helicopter this one moves the helicopter forwards and backwards and this one moves it up and down and then there's two pedals down on the floor as well and that keeps the helicopter straight. We've got two engines and they're controlled on these screens and then we've got a map in the middle to see where we're going. Thanks very much to the amazing team here at the Coast Guard base. Hello everyone, I'm here at the Hoylake lifeboat station where I'm going to go sailing on this huge lifeboat behind me. Lifeboats are very important boats because they are life-saving boats. They rescue people who are in trouble out at sea. And look, this massive tractor is used to take the boat down to the beach and launch it into the sea. Just look at those caterpillar tracks. But the lifeboat wouldn't be any use without the amazing crew that sail her and look after her. Here come the crew now to get ready for launch. These crew members are real life superheroes who give up their free time to save people who are in trouble at sea. Today they're doing a training exercise. Look at the lifeboat coming out of the station now. The tractor is pushing it out of the station and down the ramp to the beach. Those caterpillar tracks are perfect for travelling along the sandy, muddy beach. The crew are also launching a hovercraft today, which can travel on land and sea by floating around on a cushion of air. These huge fans on the back are what pushes the hovercraft along. And it's very, very noisy. Here comes the lifeboat and the tractor. The tractor can go deep into the water to launch the lifeboat smoothly into the sea. The trailer tilts and the boat just slides off. Here we go. We're out at sea. This Shannon class lifeboat can go really fast so that they can get to people in trouble as quickly as possible. This is Andy. He's the coxswain, which means he's in charge of the lifeboat today. And this is Matt, the deputy coxswain and driver of the boat. What are you doing now, Andy? Now we're going to do a man overboard exercise. What will happen is one of our guys will go in the water now and then we'll pick them up. This brave member of the crew has volunteered to get in the cold water so that the rest of the crew can practice how to pull somebody out again. On the bow! They use a special harness and ropes to pull him out as quickly and safely as possible. Just look at how the crew all work together as a team to rescue him. Do you want to have a look inside the lifeboat? Come on, Andy's going to give us a quick tour. So the first seat we come to is a crew seat or a doctor's seat. So if we have to take a doctor out, the, do the doctor would sit there. Then we've got Alistair sitting here. He's the navigator today, so he's keeping us safe and in deep water. 
as we come further back, we've got the coxswain seat. So the coxswain sits in the middle of the boat and he's able to look at everything that's going on around the boat. Alongside the coxswain, we have the mechanic seat. He's looking after the engines and he has all the controls he needs for, uh, for operating anything we need during the journey out to rescue someone. We've got the radar seat. The radar is a, is a great piece of equipment. The radar will see in the dark or it'll see through fog when, uh, when we can't see anything. And then we have the helmsman seat. This is where the, the lifeboat's driven from. At the minute, there's no one sitting in here because the lifeboat's getting driven from uh, on deck. Thanks for the tour, Andy. The tractor's waiting for us on the beach, ready to tow the boat back up to the station. Well, uh, Matt, we're about to hit the beach. You better slow down. Uh, Matt. Ah! Oh. We're okay. Ah, I see. That was supposed to happen. The lifeboat's very strong and it's designed to hit the beach at speed. Now the tractor can come along and tow the boat up and onto the trailer. As well as the crew on the boat, there is also a shore crew who make sure that the launch and recovery go smoothly. Wow, that's like magic. The trailer can spin the boat around in a circle so that she's facing the right way out to sea for the next rescue mission. A long day at sea, now it's time to head back. But the lifeboat's all dirty and the tractor and tracks. So the crew at the station all wash, scrub and clean they really look after their rescue machine. It's very important to look after the boat so that she works for a long, long time. The crew take great pride in looking after the lifeboat because they know she's special. The crew are members of the RNLI, which is a charity where kind people donate money to buy equipment, like this beautiful boat. And it's these brave volunteers who go out and rescue people. I've had a fantastic time with the crew of the RNLI Hoylake on board this incredible boat. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye. Hello everyone. I'm spending the day with a real ambulance today. We're going to be having a look inside, then going out on the road with the ambulance crew and visiting a special garage just for ambulances. Ambulances are one of the most important vehicles on the road. They're used to pick up people who are poorly or who've hurt themselves and get them to hospital as quickly as possible. An ambulance really is like a mini hospital on wheels. Everything in the back is here to treat people on the way to hospital. Let's meet the ambulance crew. This is Terry, the emergency medical technician, and he's just checking the ambulance to make sure everything's working properly before call out. And this is Paul, the paramedic. Paul decides how to help the poorly person on the way to the hospital and can give them special medicine Paul lowers this special ramp by pressing a button. The ramp makes it easier to get patients on board the ambulance. If a patient needs to lie down, Paul and Terry will use this stretcher. They can then wheel the patient up the ramp and into the back of the ambulance. These special seats can fold out so that someone from the patient's family can stay with them on the way to hospital. Paul, the paramedic, can use all of this medicine and these amazing tools to make people feel better. There's also a special hatch okay. so that Paul Terry and Terry can amazing. talk to each other. Okay. Yeah, it'll stay with Over the radio, the crew have received a real call out. It's time to go to work. 
when a call comes in, it's time for Paul and Terry to turn the lights on and drive quickly to their patient. That means they're even allowed to drive through red lights. Paul and Terry's aim is always to get the patient to hospital as quickly and safely as possible. The crew and their vehicles work really, really hard, with these ambulances doing hundreds of miles a day. This also means that sometimes things can break. But luckily, a garage has been built specially for fixing ambulances. Have you ever seen so many ambulances in one place? The expert mechanics in this amazing workshop can fix around 25 ambulances a day. Hey, what was that? Blue Mechanical! How on earth did you get in here? You better stay out of trouble. It looks like there's something wrong with one of the flashing lights on this ambulance. So it's up to Tim the Mechanic to fix the problem. There! That's better. Good as new. We can't have an ambulance without flashing lights, can we? After travelling hundreds of miles, ambulances can also get very dirty, so this is where they're given a good wash. Blue Mechanical, you better watch you don't get wet. Uh-oh, too late. Thanks very much to Paul, Terry and the whole team at the Northwest Ambulance Service for teaching us about the important service that you provide. Hello everyone! I'm spending the day with a real Stobart energy lorry. But look! Something's missing! Do you know what it is? Yes! That's it! We're missing the big trailer from the back! Let's hook it on! This is Andy and he's the driver of this lorry. Andy starts the engine by turning this key. He puts the lorry in reverse gear and carefully backs towards the trailer. Back a bit, Andy. Little bit more. There. Andy now has to do a few things to fully connect the trailer. He has to connect the hydraulic pipes and electrical lines. This means everything on the trailer can now be controlled from the cab. Andy then winds the trailer legs up. He turns off the trailer brake and fits the number plate onto the back. It's then back into the cab to test that everything's all attached. Brilliant! That looks a lot more like a lorry now. Andy, what's the best thing about driving a lorry? I really love life on the open road. You get to see a lot of interesting places around the country. Would you uh, like to see my truck? Yes, please. The front part of the lorry is called the cab. And this is where the driver sits. So Gecko, this is my cab, it's got all the usual things that you'd expect and some special surprises too. This is a steering wheel, it was up and down in every position that you'd want it to go. It's really, really good. Just here, this switch here, that turns all the lights on. And this here is the all important horn. And I also have a bed in the back, it's really, really comfy. Because Andy has to do very long drives, his cosy cabin has a comfy bed for him to sleep in at night. There's all sorts of other things in here to make sure Andy's comfortable for his long journeys. There's some curtains and a reading light. Wakey, wakey, Andy! It's time to go out on the road, so before the journey, 
Andy walks around the lorry doing his safety checks. Wow, there's a lot of wheels to check. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Each Stobart lorry is unique and gets given its own name. This lorry is called Demi Nicole. Right, Gecko, we're good to go. Hop in. We're off to pick up some waste wood that would normally go straight in the bin. Stobart Energy pick up this wood in their lorries and turn it into electricity to power homes. It's amazing. Andy presses a button to open the roof sheet of the empty trailer. He then jumps back in the cab where it's safe. This very clever vehicle is called a grab and it's used to load up Andy's trailer. The driver uses the grabber to pick up lots of wood and drop it into the back. To make sure the driver of the grab can see over the top of the trailer, the cab can go up and down. Wow, I've never seen that before. It looks like we're full, so it's time for Andy to put the top back on, hop back in and take this waste wood back to base. base, Andy opens the back doors. He presses this button to start emptying the trailer. Inside the trailer is an amazing moving floor which moves the wood backwards. It then tips out of the back. Once out, it's then time for another big vehicle to come along and pick up the wood. This is called a loading shovel and it loads the wood into this big machine which chops it into much smaller pieces. These small pieces have now become special wood fuel which can be burned in a power station. This amazing material has come from wood that would normally have been buried underground as rubbish. The lorry is reloaded with the wood fuel and then driven to the special biomass power station. This power station can power 35,000 homes. Andy carefully reverses into the bay and tips the wood fuel off. The wood fuel travels underground, up a conveyor belt and is then burned heating water to produce steam, a bit like a steam train. The steam turns a big turbine or wheel which creates electricity. Thanks very much to Andy and all the team here at Stobart Energy for teaching us all about this amazing lorry and how it helps to create electricity. I'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone, I love steam trains, so today is my lucky day. I'm in North Wales to go on a ride through the Snowdonia Mountains and learn all about these amazing machines. Woohoo, this train is just leaving the station now. Look at all that steam coming out, it's no wonder they're called steam trains. Many years ago, these trains were used to transport slate from up high in the mountains, but now they're just used to take lucky passengers on amazing train rides. 
Come on, let's get on board. These old-fashioned carriages are very comfy. And you can even get yummy hot chocolate served straight to your seats. This train is the best. Just look at the amazing views out of the windows as we steam our way through the Snowdonia Mountains. Wow, it's beautiful here. We're all very clean and comfortable in here. But I wonder what it's like for the driver in the cabin up front. The part of the train that does all of the hard work is called the locomotive. And it's up to the driver and the fireman to keep the locomotive running and pulling all of those carriages and passengers. Steam trains run on coal and the fireman has to shovel lots of it into the firebox to keep the engine running. This is Ian, and he's the driver of this locomotive. Ian, please can you tell us how coal makes the train go? So this is the coal we burn on our steam engine. Put it in the fire there. We burn it and that creates lots and lots of heat. And that heat we use to boil this water. Um, it's just like boiling your kettle at home. It makes the steam come out the top, but we capture that steam and we send it to the front of this steam logo and that makes us go. To make sure there's enough coal for the journey ahead, the crew have to load up the train's coal from the coal store at the station. This is hard, tiring and dirty work. All of the crew that work on the train are volunteers too, which means they don't get paid. They do it because they love the trains. This is Claire and she's the fireman. It's her job to load the coal into the firebox and keep that fire roaring. And what I'm doing now is I'm making my fire bigger because we're pulling a very big train today. So it needs a nice, big, very hot fire to be able to do that. I love steam trains because I just find them magical. As well as loading the coal into the train, it's just as important to make sure the train has plenty of water in the tank because this is what gets turned into steam, which pushes the train forwards. The crew are topping up this train's tank with water now. Wow, this one's thirsty. Ian, how do you drive a steam train? We drive a steam train by making it go faster like that. And then this is the brake. And this is what we use to stop ourselves. So this lever here makes us go either forwards or backwards. And that is how you drive a steam train. Let's take a look at the different parts of a steam train. Here's the cab. This is where the driver and fireman drive the train and load the fire. Inside here is the firebox, which is really, really hot. Above the firebox sits the boiler, where the water is stored. Because this is right above the fire, the water boils and turns into steam. The steam is then forced down through a pipe and pushes something called a piston, which then drives the wheels forwards or backwards. This is the chimney, which is where the smoke from the firebox can escape. And most importantly, this is the whistle. The whistle works when I pull this handle. And that means that steam is going up to the whistle and making the sound. Ian's connecting a carriage to the locomotive. This is called coupling. Because these trains are very old, they take a lot of looking after which is why the Festiniog and Welsh Highland Railway have their own special garage with an amazing team of engineers, mechanics, joiners and painters. This place is a hive of activity. 
In here, they're building a brand new carriage from scratch. And in here, this is where the beautiful details on the outside of the carriage are painted on by hand. Well, it's time for me to say goodbye to these beautiful trains. Thanks very much to all the team at the Festinyog and Welsh Highland Railway for teaching us all about steam trains. See you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm spending the day with a very special type of car today. A Tesla electric car. This car is very, very fast. We're going to learn lots of amazing things about electric cars today. But first, let's have a look inside. Whoa! Look at those doors! That's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I think it's worth doing a Gecko Instant Replay on that. Woohoo! These are called Falcon Wing Doors because they look like a bird's wings and they're designed to open in even really small spaces. Inside the car there's the usual things you'd find. Comfy seats, a steering wheel, pedals, but also this really big screen in the middle which lets you do important stuff like look at the map to see where you're going and play amazing music like Toddler Fun Learning. And the Stegosaurus down by the swamp. Along comes a dinosaur making such a loud roar. Most cars that you see on the road are powered by petrol or diesel, which means they have noisy engines with dirty fumes that come out of the exhaust at the back. Electric cars are completely silent and run on electricity. There's no visits to the petrol station for these cars. All you need to do is plug them in and charge the battery inside. It's just like charging a phone. A battery is something that stores energy until it's needed. You'll find batteries in lots of things. I bet there's a lot of batteries in some of your toys. Once the car's plugged in, the screen shows you just how long is left to fully charge. This electric car is a Tesla Model X and it's got a really big battery inside which is what helps it go really really fast. This car can get to 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 2.9 seconds. This is what 2.9 seconds feels like. Go! Wow that was fast! Do you know where a car's engine is usually kept? Yes, it's usually in the bonnet in the front of the car. Let's have a look what's in here. Hold on, look at that. It's empty. There's no engine. Tesla cars have electric motors instead, which are connected to the wheels. The bottom part of a car which is connected to the wheels is called a chassis. This is a chassis without the rest of the car on top. The motor sits here and the big battery sits here. One day we'll all be driving around in electric cars because they're better for the planet. Instead of using dirty fuel which creates pollution, very clever engineers have invented amazing new ways of creating electricity. One of the best ways is to use the power of the sun to charge our electric cars. All across the world there are fields of solar panels which point towards the sky. They convert sunlight into electricity. Solar panels are amazing. You can even put solar panels on your roof at home. Now all of this is really important, but sometimes you just want to see a car 
do a little dance. And this Tesla has a secret dancing mode just for fun. I've loved learning all about these amazing electric cars today. Thanks very much to all the team at Tesla for showing us just what they can do. We'll see you again soon. Bye! If you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching! Bye!